Have you noticed that when people are talking about edge computing, no one ever finds the edge? I mean, they'll talk to you about the near edge and the far edge and the front edge and the micro edge and the macro edge and the device edge. They'll talk about all sorts of edges, but we never find the edge. Stick around. Today, we're gonna find the edge. Welcome back everyone. My name's Elias Kineser and today we're going to answer the question, what is edge computing? Now, this will be the start of many videos that we're going to do around edge computing. As you'll see in this video, edge is a very rich and broad topic. So if you're interested in this type of content, make sure you give me a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, hit that notification bell so that you're alerted the next time I upload a video, share this video and leave a comment below so that we can have a conversation as far as what you'd like to see in terms of edge computing coverage. Now, when I think of the edge, I think of uh, where people and things converge to interact with the digital world. So we're using smartphones, we're using smart cars, we're using all of these things as humans, as people to interact with the digital world, right? But we're still in the physical world. These things can also, on their own, from machine to machine, interact with the digital world. Now, when the metaverse arrives, I'm going to tweak this a little bit because what the metaverse is going to do is instead of just interacting with the digital world from the outside, the metaverse will put us inside the digital world where physical meets digital and digital becomes a reality. So we'll tweak that a little bit, but I digress. The metaverse is still a ways out. Let's focus on edge computing. And let's begin by giving edge computing a proper definition, a good definition, a simple definition. Edge computing is a distributed computing model that brings data processing closer to the source of the data. So what that means, let me give you a quick example. If you have a smart car, let's say you have a Tesla, Tesla has all of these sensors. Without edge, without the edge computing capabilities, all of the data that's generated from this car would have to travel to a data center or to the cloud to be processed and then travel back. With edge computing, that smart car, that Tesla, for example, has compute power to where it can analyze the data and make decisions, actionable decisions based on that data. So there's limited compute power, obviously, within the car, but it also can interact with data centers that are within closer proximity than, for example, the public cloud or your data center. So maybe there's a cell tower nearby that has some compute power, then it can interact with that. It can send data to that cell tower for additional processing and then send back. So the idea is we want to bring the data processing power as close as possible to where that data is being generated from. So the next time someone sarcastically says, well, the edge of what? The edge of the cloud, the edge of the data center, the everything's an edge. Say no, it's the edge of the devices, the sensors, the smart things that are generating this data. So the edge of the iPhone, the edge of the Tesla, the edge of these things, that is where the edge is, that is the edge. And we're creating all of this in support of that, it could be a smart restaurant. Take Chick-fil-A, for example, that's a fantastic use case of how they're using the edge. In their case, the edge is a location. It's one of their restaurants or many of their restaurants that have all of these smart devices that are generating all of this data that requires real-time analytics. So again, for them, that is the edge. And if you've got four or 500 restaurants that are deployed across the country, then that is the edge. These smart devices that are generating all of this data in their restaurants is the edge. But so what is driving organizations to adopt edge computing? What are the business drivers specifically? If, if you were to say, hey, I just need you to narrow it down to one, give me one business driver. I would narrow it down to real-time analytics, real-time data processing and analytics. And that's for humans and for smart things, by the way. Let's take the Tesla example again. Tesla is a self-driving vehicle. It has that capability. But in order to self-drive itself, it needs to have the right amount of information analyzed in real time so that it can figure out when is the right time to get into another lane, how to self-park, how to self-drive, what is the speed limit, etc., etc. In order to have that continuous adjustment of the driving experience, it needs to have real-time data analytics that's processed. And the same thing for humans. In order to have a competitive edge, we need to be able to ingest the data in real time, get an actionable insight out of it so that we can make an informed decision. So it all comes down to real-time data analytics and real-time data processing. 
Now, if you were to ask me, hey, give me another business driver, I would say probably regulatory requirements and security. So, you know, sometimes you want to be able to contain data within a certain geographical boundary, whatever that geographical boundary is, for privacy reasons, for data sovereignty reasons, for all sorts of things. Now, the Edge also has a very rich ecosystem of connectivity methods. Most recently, 5G and 5G will continue to be something that is a super companion to the Edge that enables all sorts of use cases. So I would say 5G, private 5G, all of these things. I would say all the traditional stuff, you know, you've got fiber, you've got all the data center connectivity. There's a lot of rich ecosystem of connectivity that can be optimized. And again, here what we're looking for is reduced latency. We want to reduce the latency as much as possible, and we want to be within closer proximity to where that data is being generated so that we can process it on the spot and create real-time analytics out of it. So Internet of Things, sensors, those are all uh, potentially drivers. And we also want autonomous operations. So if I were to narrow it down, all of these combined become a very strong, become very strong business drivers for any organization to consider edge computing. Elias, talk to me about the different types of edges. Well, let's take a quick look. So the first one, let's first make sure that we find the edge. We found the edge, folks. The edge is smart things, smart devices, smart cars, smart state. It is anything that is generating this data, whether it's your smartphone or it's your smart car. So let's make sure we get that clear. This is the edge. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is what's known as the far edge. The far edge are things like your public cloud regions, like your data centers. These are large centers that have large compute power. And it's called the far edge because it is typically the farthest from these devices. It is the farthest from the edge. And this also tends to have the highest type or the highest level of latency. So if I were to put a latency number around this, I would say it'll revolve anywhere from 25 to 100 milliseconds uh, round trip. So, I mean, don't hold me to it, but I'm just giving a rough idea just to illustrate that in this situation, the far edge tends to have high latency. Now, the next thing is called the near edge. Now, the near edge is closer to these edge devices, hence why it's called the near edge. This is where you'll find the public cloud providers' local zones. This is where public cloud providers are deploying these local zones in smaller areas to be closer to where that data is generated, to have reduced latency. This, again, is opening up all of these types of use cases. This is where your remote offices can potentially be. This is potentially where co-location can also exist. Now, it's all going to be relative, again, depending on the devices and the proximity, but in general, this is where uh, it would be. Now, the near edge would have medium to low latency. This is where we're going to see you know, anywhere from five to 25 millisecond round trip. Again, don't hold me to it. These are just rough estimates. Now, the third model of edge that I wanna talk about, I'm calling it the tiny edge. <laughs> different folks will call it different things, the micro edge, the small edge, etc. I'm going to call this the tiny edge. This is where you're going to find cloud edge locations. This is, for example, where uh, for, you'll find the telco locations. This is where you'll find services like AWS Wavelength or Azure Edge Zones or CDNs or content delivery networks. Those are all things that will be the closest to these devices, hence why it's called the tiny edge. And from a latency perspective, this is going to be low to ultra low with you know one to five millisecond latency. So this is as close as possible. It could be a stadium. It could be a telco location. Again, very, very close to where that data is generated so that it can you know help process it and return in real time. So those are the different types of edges. And again, we found the edge. So everything is revolving around the edge. And the way to think about this is the farther you are from the edge, the higher the latency is going to be. And as a result, the bigger the data center, the bigger the compute power. And don't get me wrong, there will be instances where you will need to have you know, applications that are running at the edge connect the cloud for maybe a deeper analytics or more a richer variety of analytics. So that's entirely possible and vice versa. You might have something that's moving out of the cloud and going back to the edge. All of this, again, opens up 
this end-to-end -end hybrid architecture that every single enterprise should think of. So what types of technologies do organizations want to use at the edge? <laughs> well, they want to use everything, but the most popular technologies that are being used at the edge include containers and Kubernetes, include serverless, include functions as a service, and the new thing now is ADN or application delivery network. So an application delivery network is very similar to a content delivery network, but instead of caching content and accelerating content, with ADNs what you're doing is you are providing a combination of features to an application to control or to offer availability, security, viability, and acceleration. So think of ADN in AWS language, for example, as um, Lambda meets CloudFront. In Azure language, that would be functions meets Azure CDN. So those are the types of things that you're able to do at the edge. We wanna think of the edge also in terms of being able to deploy platforms at the edge. Now, whether that platform is stitched together based on a combination of services that we have developed or whether it's out of the box, like an OpenShift or Red Hat OpenShift or a Pivotal that we can leverage at the edge that will give us object storage, that will give us rich database as a service capabilities on top of everything else, including functions and others. We wanna be able to leverage rich connectivity like 5G and SD-WAN at the edge. We wanna be able to do IoT controls at the edge. So we wanna be able to do a lot of things at the edge and don't think of this as, well, that's a little too much. No, there are a lot of use cases, but again, I'm going to highlight two that you're very familiar with or that you should be very familiar with. One is Tesla and the other one is Chick-fil-A. Take a look at what Chick-fil-A is doing in terms of what they're, how they're equipping, how they're making every single one of their restaurants essentially a digital business. That is the transformation that a restaurant chain like Chick-fil-A is bringing to their restaurants. All of the equipment that is generating all of these, all of this data is being analyzed in real time so that they can make actionable decisions. These decisions can range from, you know, they need to maintain certain devices to figuring out, you know, how much the oil can, how, many, how much fries can the oil serve? So there's a lot of analytics that can be had and that transformation is truly at that point gold. So in the end, what did we learn about the edge? Well, we learned that there's actually an edge and that, you know, when we're talking about the edge, it's the edge of all of these smart things, these smart devices, all of these things are the edge and everything else revolves around it. It's not the edge of the data center or the edge of the cloud. We've defined the far edge, the near edge and the tiny edge. And we've talked about the different latencies that they have. We've given a proper definition to edge as well. But I want to leave you with this, and this is going to be the topic for the next video. So again, if you're interested in this type of content, make sure you like, you subscribe, you share so that you don't miss the next video. I want to invite you to pivot from a cloud first, or let's not say cloud first strategy, maybe a cloud focused strategy to a digital focused strategy or a digital first strategy where you have an end-to-end -end strategy that includes the data center, that includes the cloud, that includes the edge and everything that is in between. We're in a world that's on the verge of getting into a metaverse and an omniverse and all of the things that are changing around us. We have to be prepared and it can no longer be by focusing on one specific thing. We have to focus on everything. I know it's a lot, but that's the industry that we signed up to be part of. And with efficiency, with the right automation, with the right knowledge, we are able to do this and more and deliver a truly digital business experience to our organizations to give them that competitive edge. I hope this content was very informative. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching this to the end. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.